This is Chris Vaughn with In Her Company, where we harness the power of women to be their own solutions. Today, we are bringing you episode eight of the 90 Day series. And just as a brief recap, last time we were talking about creating a vision for yourself as great as the one that you have for your business or anything else your mission, as well as the vehicles to carry that out. Your homework with that episode was to craft initial summaries for each and consider possibilities, applications, or outcomes that they may lead to, taking into account any common threads in order to weave something that's uniquely your own. Now, just as we touch on how being multi-passionate affects perspective, the selection of components for your vision, and ultimately how it's layered, so also your journey type. In previous episodes, I mentioned that our clients typically arrive at one of three outcomes. The first outcome they arrive at is that what they're really seeking or need most at the moment is a life change, a better way of being or living that works for them and to forego being an entrepreneur overall. They have paid attention to their routines, seasons, their flows, and emerge by creating a more natural pace, allowing them to remain aligned and to make decisions along with that in a manner that works best for them. What I'm going to do for each one of these, however, is to provide several steps, more of a high-level view of each. More fewer steps, however, may be required, of course, depending upon your current circumstances and goals. But the foundation for each is this accumulation of insight that we started with at episode one that you have gained since that time resulting in how your threads, overlapped experiences can best be utilized, providing a solution that others are seeking. Or to return to yourself, to use these insights to reawaken forgotten dreams in order to cultivate a new future. So now, if this is the first one, outcome that you've decided on, the life change to pursue, here are your four key steps. The first one is life change, involvement, strategy, and desired outcome. The first one, fully explore your options without limiting or constraining them to fit a certain mold. You get to decide your trajectory, of course, by creating a simple plan of action to propel you toward the outcome you set. Remember, it's decide, plan, and execute, not decide, plan, and drag your heels. The second step for this option is involvement. So now that you know where you're headed, you get to decide. Who needs to be involved in that process in order to get you there? Is this new way of living, this better way of living for you, something that you can do on your own by yourself? Or do you need to enlist the aid of trainers, mentors, maybe even medical professionals? When involving others, it's important to do your own due diligence and have clarity on exactly what it is you need help with. The better you're able to articulate what you need, the easier it will be able to find credible, reputable individuals with your best interests in mind to partner with you on your journey. The third step is you also need a vehicle to your desired outcome, even though it's not a business. So action is both a direction and a habit. Day-to-day, make conscious effort to ensure your actions are consistent with the life change you are pursuing. 
You are after progress, not perfection. And old habits can be difficult to break, but are not impossible. You may even want to revisit earlier lessons to recall what supports or detracts from your journey. Method. Depending on your goal, there may be existing standards or best practices. Some may produce the outcome you seek, but be quite rigid. Others may be more lenient or customizable. You may also create a method of your own based on your unique rhythm, routine, personal flow, and maximizes benefits. How you proceed to simplify and enhance your journey and help you progress more efficiently and effectively. Also, reinforcement is key. For times when your intentions are good, but your efforts fall short. Previously, we identified our triggers, which are situations, habits, or occurrences that precede a negative response or course of action, so that we can quickly course correct when needed and avoid falling deeper into negative thought patterns and self-sabotage. Part of planning for success is having a plan when things do not go as anticipated so you can continue forward without undoing any of the progress that you've made. And lastly, contrary to what you may think, achieving your goal marks the beginning of your journey, not the end. So celebrate your achievement for reaching this point in spite of challenges. Then look for ways to deepen that same level of commitment, consistency, and perseverance to develop beyond this point. You may find you're able to relate to people from security and wholeness rather than competition and inadequacy, or that your success has spilled over into the lives of others inspiring them to take a trek of their own. This is the high point you were seeking, but there are other peaks you will reach. So continue to explore and live life fully. The second outcome our clients arrive at, and just take a note because I'll circle back to this one, but the second one is one-off projects are ideas, your path is going to be a hybrid of the two. So pay attention. And with that, we're going to skip to actually becoming a womanpreneur or woman business owner. Season or not, if you've decided that, yes, I already am a woman business owner and I'm going to dive deeper into this, or that I'm new, I'm going to pursue this. If this is the best expression, given your goals that you want to achieve or desire outcome, congrats. For newer intermediate entrepreneurs, this most often results in covering gaps in operations or strategy, placing structure around their vision so it can be brought more fully into reality. For seasoned entrepreneurs, This option may look like broadening reach, adding greater depth or exiting to continue their work in another more meaningful manner, clearing the way for legacy. The caveat that provided a cathartic moment for those with the wealth of ideas, especially those are multi-passionate, if you remember, was that some of those ideas aren't for you. You're the receiver. You're the one who will birth them, but will hand off to someone else, thereby changing their lives. There's also a market for selling ideas that's even more rarely mentioned. So the four key steps for choosing the path of the womanpreneur are your customer, type, how served, and customer's desired outcome. Now, We're using customer loosely here to refer to anyone who encounters your business, whether individual or group. So the first step, your customer. This is where you hone into who your customer is, their needs and wants. If you're just starting out, 
All you have right now are assumptions, unless you've actually dove into this. But even well-established businesses experience subtle changes to clientele over time, so it's good to periodically revisit. You'll test those assumptions and develop a more in-depth and accurate customer profile later. Preliminary, it can be broken down into the most common advice, which is to find a problem, then create a solution. (laughs) To us, this is no different than working your life around your job versus working your job around your life. Your goal is not to create a job for yourself, but freedom, flexibility, and quality of life. And we trust you are well aware of areas you enjoy spending more time and those you prefer to steer clear of. Therefore, we take the opposite approach that previous lessons have built on, which is begin with what you want to offer as a solution. Determine if it has more than one application and identify if there's a large enough client pool to draw from. Then, further flesh out your offering and messaging using their pain points to help you frame the benefits and craft your solution, which is the path of process you'll use to take your customer from their current reality to their desired outcome. If there are gaps, You can always research further to learn more, broaden, and add more depth to your offering if the focus is too narrow, or uncover better suited clientele and more relevant applications, or explore another idea. There will always be problems to solve, but your life, skill set, and aspirations are not suited for all. Type. Type refers to if your business is primarily B2B, business to business, or B2C, which is business to consumer. Now, depending on the industry, of course, and the venture you're pursuing, you may serve both. However, what you're deciding here is where your primary customers fall so you can serve them with ease and set up your back end and operations that best support that and increase your business's chance of success. The goal is not to be all things to all people, but for your business to be top of mind for those it should attract. Serve how? Product or service? Nowadays, it's common for it to be a combination of both. Your company may offer both or a combo product service experience package to its customers. You are deciding the primary method of delivery that will provide the greatest benefit, best experiences, and most positive outcome for your customers. The method of delivery may affect how your solution is crafted And also give thought to if your back-end operations adequately supports it through fulfillment. Depending on industry, there may also be additional nuances or considerations or even compliance. Complementary services or product lines can be added as you grow or based on client demand. Done too soon. It may lower the perceived value of your primary offering, not be as good a fit as you assume, or rob you of even more in-depth data and feedback of your main product or service. It may even confuse customers about what you actually provide, besides spreading yourself too thin and operations beyond the capacity that it can support. So master your key offering. Give yourself a chance to understand it more fully through iteration. Then develop, add, adjust so that its value is always evident. The last one is the customer's journey.
or desire outcome. Your customer journey is the process that your solution takes them through that leads to the desired outcome they seek. It is the solution to their problem that they access via interaction with your company, delivered via your unique method, process, or system. It is how you deliver on a promise to solve their problem and their experience with it, resulting in a desired outcome they seek. For you, though, is shaping what's in your hand into something of value for those who've been waiting for you without even knowing it. Do this and you will serve them and yourself well. Now, circling back to the one-off project or one-off idea. As mentioned, this path, which is the second outcome we're coming back to, is a hybrid. It may be the long-held project or idea that you kept in mind or intentionally placed on a back burner till some later date because you didn't quite know what to make of it or how to execute it, or something that suddenly stood out to you that's moral, just, something our world needs, or so blatantly obvious to you that it's mind-boggling that it doesn't already exist. Now, similar to a business, it still needs structure, a reason or a purpose for execution, and a target. But you may find the methods of delivery more flexible through the utilization of encounters, experiences, pop-ups, and other passive structures. And desire outcomes to be informative, educational, or even simply the encounter itself. It's momentarily versus momentary rather versus ongoing temporary but no less impactful meaningful and perhaps a bridge to something else not that the other steps we discuss won't come into play but for the one off option start with these four steps the first one a desired outcome but one that you set your why for who and an outcome that you want Second, involvement. What roles, parties, expertise are needed to make this a reality? Third, your customer. Who? Individual, groups, society at large. Who are you doing this for? And how will this be a gift to them? And fourth, instead of how served, how executed. What's the format, the specific scope? so that your simple one-aspect project or event doesn't morph into a behemoth tackling a global issue, causing overwhelm that results in you placing it right back on that burner yet again. And delivery. Now, if your one-off is well-received or successful, the chance of it becoming an annual repeated or series of projects or events is likely as well as gaining higher levels of support or interest. And it may even necessitate the formation of a business in time. In addition to the four steps, though, that I just mentioned, also give some thought to where you stand should this happen. Namely, your personal scope of involvement. Would you want to continue with it and stay at the helm? Would you want to allow someone else to become the face and you receive royalties? Would you want to sell it and use the proceeds to launch something new or fund your next phase or higher quality of life? You can always change your mind, but having some idea of where you're likely to stand just in case it actually happens is a far better point to negotiate from. So, your homework. Now, if we were in person, this assignment would actually cover two weeks. So this week's homework is a little bit longer, so grab your notebook. Similar, the first one. Similar to what you did for vision, mission, and vehicle, write a brief summary of which option you decided on. Remember, their life change, better way of being a living. Um, Entrepreneur, one-off project. Write a brief summary of which is the right course for you right now. 
and why. Number 2A. If life change, or number two, rather. If life change is your answer, then in your notebook, jot down what step you're taking and how does it feel to be at this point and use our handout. There'll be a link in the description as a guide to flesh out your options, trajectory, new habits, routines, and reinforcement. Now, if you show womanpreneur a one-off project, answer the question, what step are you taking and how does it feel to be at this point? But also write a brief one paragraph summary regarding the outcome you want to provide, who will benefit from it, and what you presently think is the best way or format for it to be delivered. Number three, I also want you to create a brief or two brief preliminary statements based on the info you have now to quickly share with anyone. The first one is solely in reference to your product or service. Remember, your focus is on the benefits, not the features. So for example, there's a difference between our drill comes with five attachments, 17 bits, three ergonomically designed hand grips, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> there's a difference between that and our drill was designed with the highest quality materials so you can quickly whittle away your to-do list and get back to enjoying your family and weekend. So focus on the benefits, not the features. 3B, the second statement that you're writing will focus solely on you. I am your name. I provide who your target or ideal client with what product of service so they can do or to do what. Now, I'll make an exception this once and share a working example with you so you can better understand what I just said. And this too will be in the notes. How your second statement will roughly look is something along the lines of this. Hello, I am Chris Vaughn. I work with multi-passionate womenpreneurs ready to gain clarity and structure their vision so they can have the impact they are created to. Moving on to 3C. Once you do the steps mentioned, you're going to create just one final statement. And I'll go slow so you can write it down, but it will be in a handout so you can copy it. Here we go. I am developing, creating, working on product or service that what it does for whoever your ideal client is, so they can outcome you provide. Once again, this is going to be in a handout, but in other words, I'm developing, creating, working on a product or service that will, whatever it does for my ideal client, so they can the outcome you're promising to deliver. Okay. And number four, here's where we get to the fun part. <laughs> A light market test. You're going to go outside and talk to 10 random people. How about that? <laughs> You're going to use your new statement in part B. I am Chris Vaughn, blah, 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 <laughs> to introduce yourself and follow it up with 3C, I'm developing, working on creating. Will you answer several quick questions for me? The questions are on the sheet, but here you are. Based on briefly what I described, do you think it has value? Um, any additional thoughts on how it can be made better, other uses, application features, demographics? Would you buy it if they actually gave you some tips? Would you buy it if you had those features? 
Um, another question, may I have your name? First one is fine, of course. Um, and would you like to be notified when it's released goes to market? You know, of course, get their email if yes, because this one exercise is actually accomplishing three things. Hopefully you will see that. And then, of course, always thank them for their time. Repeat. Ten people. If you're hyperventilating, it's, it's okay. Calm down. <laughs> It will be okay. Trust me. Um, even in early conceptual stages, feedback can help you avoid wasting precious time and resources. You're not doing this to create a business plan. You're gathering information to test your assumptions. Okay. And it should be fun. And yes, when I offered a 90 day series, whether it was in person or all online, all my clients participated in this, but let me give you a quick few tips. No, the first one is no friends or family. The people closest to you are more likely to base their response on what they know of you rather than solely on what you say of the product or service. People who do not know you don't carry this bias and their responses are more honest and insightful. Number two, yes, face to face. Step outside your comfort zone. Get in front of your people. And I suggest get in front of your people in areas you're most likely to encounter them. Um, whoever you believe at this moment to be your ideal client, because some may actually become customers. Number three, quickly jot their feedback down and move on to the next question. You're not attempting to engage them in long conversations. If they want to follow your journey, they can provide their email to do so. Number four, if you are asked a question about your product or service that you haven't considered yet, it's okay. Remind them when you open with your statement, it's in development. You're working on, you're creating, you're developing. Number five, don't argue or allow negative responses or reception to deter you. As great as an idea may be, some simply may not agree. They're responding to your questions and their limited understanding of your product or service. It's not personable. It's not personal. Even the most negative comments may contain grains of useful insight. Thank them and move on. Number six, stay safe. Out in the open, public spaces, and visit several because your responses don't have to come from the same space. And lastly, attitude is everything. Expect the best. Enjoy the process. Expect people to be excited about what you have to say and just have a good time. And if you're wondering, the highest number of responses that a client returned with is 34. Feel free to beat her record because the more data, the better for you. And I'll even give you an added bonus for those of you who are ambitious. Take the same exercise. And instead of doing it with 10 random people, ask those questions of other business owners in your field. The insight will be invaluable. And yes, as I said on the beginning, this exercise is helpful whether you're starting from scratch or experience. Now, next week will be the final episode of this series. So be sure to share your experience in general or with this or any other episode on Instagram by using the hashtag InHerCoPodcast. You can also send a quick email to team at inher.co. You've got this. Have fun and good luck. Thank you for listening to the In Her Company podcast. In Her Company is produced and hosted by me, Chris Vaughn, audio production and administration by Organized Chaos. A huge thanks to the In Her Company team and community of Catalyst supporting the show. Connect with us on Instagram at inherco underscore 
or join our Substack at inhercompany.substack.com. And for more information about In Her Company, our guest, our queries, visit www.inher.co.com.